Welcome to Miriam's Online Academy. Today we're looking at Castle on a Cloud from Les Miserables. The arrangement I'm playing from today is from Sheet Music Digital. You can purchase this music by following the link in the description below. We will be looking at changing meter, holding notes, pedaling, form, and fingering. So let's get started. All right, so this is Castle on a Cloud from the musical Les Mis. A very beautiful piece, small and, and a little haunting in its melody. It's very popular with the young singers. They like to sing this as they're learning and it's also a very pretty piece to play on piano too. So we're going to look at it from the piano perspective. In this arrangement, we don't have any sharps or flats. It's just in the key of A minor, meaning all white notes. There's no accidentals. So that's a nice thing. Uh, after that, we do have some rhythms that you need to be aware of. The first one being eighth note rhythms and eighth note rests. So there's our rest, and then right beside it is our rhythms. So when you're counting, you want to count one and two and three and four end so that you can catch all of those eighth note counts. One and is on the eighth note, two and three. Now we get to the next rhythm you need to know, which are 16th notes. There are two 16th notes and an eighth note, meaning we still count the and right there on three, except we play two notes instead of just the one eighth note. I'll show you in a second. And then we play four and. There's a tie here, so look out. And right here, we've got two four time signature. Now this means changing meter. So let me play it for you first and then we can talk about the changing meter. Here we go. And that's our introduction. So, changing meters. This means that in one piece we have two time signature, nor two, two time signatures. Normally we only have one. We have either four four or three four or two four. Well, in our introduction, we've got two. We start counting one and two and three and four and, and then right here, we switch all of a sudden to just one and two and, and then, surprise, over here, right at the beginning of our song, we switch to three and. So we now have three time signatures instead of just one. I'll count it through for you and you can kind of see how it will work. But before I do, I'm going to just highlight every time we change time signatures, which is pretty well every bar. See? Every time we have numbers, we have new time signatures. Okay. From the intro, I'm going to show you how the, the counting changes. One and two and three and four and one and two. So you'll notice that once we get into the actual song, we only switch between the 2-4 two, two and the 3-4. The 4-4 four, four we save just for um, interlude sections or actually it kind of comes back right there. But we'll get there. So now we figured out the counting, let's look at some of these notes. We've got pretty standard notes. They all kind of stay in the middle of the piano. All of the fingerings written there for us too. So you can go through it mostly on your own. I will just point out a couple places. Right here in measure seven, we have some fancy left hand work. What we get is we get two lines. So this is one line and this is the second line. And then here's our first line. See the rest on the top and then underneath we get this the second line. So in order to figure this out, we have to make sure that we follow whatever we see. So number one, the first beat, we've got a quarter note D and a half note A. So that means we only hold the D 
for a quarter and we move straight away to the E, but our A is holding through, so it looked like this. And so now I'm playing A and E, and then I hold my half note E and my top note changes then to G sharp. So basically the two lines take turns playing different notes. So we start with D and A, move to E, then G sharp. And then I give you the fingering here, so finger three, finger three on F, and then we hold it because it's a half note, and we play the A, so now we're playing two notes at the same time. And then in the next bar, we keep the A and we play the D. So we're constantly just holding one note, changing the next, holding one note, changing the next. Let's keep going. So we're playing the D and the A right here. Then we've got uh, hold A, switch to E. And then we have an up stem and a down stem G sharp right here. That means we're back to one line. We don't have to do all this layering anymore. We just play a single G sharp. So that's nice. I'm gonna play that whole section for you so you can see very clearly what I'm doing. Here we go. Starting from right there. So, together. E, then G sharp, then three on F, and then to the E, and then just a single G sharp. All right, this is a very um, complex fingering and complex style of playing, but the thing to remember is just you always have to follow exactly what you see. If you see a half note, you play the half note. If you see a quarter, you play the quarter, okay? I'll play it with both hands starting at measure seven again where my purple arrow is so you can hear what it sounds like with both hands. And that is the first section of this piece. You'll notice that we have some repeat signs right here with some first and second endings. If you're not familiar with first and second endings, this is what you do. So we play our introduction, then we play all the way through, all the way through this, till we get to number one. Once we get to number one, we look at this repeat because that is a repeat sign. So we go all the way back to where we see the other repeat sign. We go all the way through again, through, 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 through. Then when we get here, we have the number one bracket next. Because we've already played number one, we skip it. We go to the number two, and then we can keep going. All right? So. Let's actually keep going this time. I'm going to play you the beginning of this next section, starting from the number two. middle portion of our piece. In it, we have much of the same. We have a 4-4 four, four time signature. <laughs> if you look through, it stays 4-4 four, four time signature all the way through. Very nice for us. So we don't have to worry about time. We do have a new rhythm right here. It's new in a way, but really it's not because all it's doing is instead of playing one eighth note and two sixteenth notes, we're playing the equivalent of three sixteenth notes and then one here. So if we were to break it up, here are my four sixteenths. We're basically taking the first three here, here, and here, and we're holding them and then only playing this one. So it would sound like this. One E and da. Kind of gives us a little bit of a rocking motion. That's how you can figure them out. 
Other than that, left hand, pretty standard until we get about here. We have some of those crazy layers. Not too crazy here though. We just have the triad. This is an F triad in second inversion, meaning C is the lowest note, and then F and A. And then you'll see that the C ties and the top two change. Same thing happens here. The bottom stays the same, but the top changes. Other than that, you can read through your notes, you can look through the rhythms. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. All of the fingering is even written for you, and I really recommend every time you learn a new piece, follow the fingering. I think that's one of the most common things I say to any of my students is follow the fingering because the fingering is there to help you play the piece better and help you learn the piece faster. Okay, second page. We have a ritardando at the top, meaning get slower, and two fermatas. A fermata means hold. So we can hold that little, those two notes as long as we want. I like to hold them, I don't know, maybe two or three beats, maybe four. Depends on what I'm feeling. And the nice thing about fermatas is that you can do that. You can change your mind about how long you want to hold them. Okay, so I'm gonna start from measure 15 right here. And then we'll go into the last section. If you take a quick look through this section, it is almost exactly the same as the beginning. All of this is the same from here, same, 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 all the way through, right up until our ending. And even our ending is exactly the same as our beginning. So we have our beginning. It's almost exactly the same, just a little different in the ending. Now the ending not too hard. We have our fermata again, and we just have a kind of a complicated rhythm. So I will count you through that. This is called a syncopation when you have an eighth note and then a quarter note and an eighth note, or basically a short note, a long note, and then a short note again. We call that a syncopation. So we go one and, this note goes on and, two and, and then three. So it sounds like this. One and two and three. All right, so you've learned all the notes, you've figured out all the fingerings, you have looked through all the rhythms, now there's just a couple more details that you can add to your piece. The first one is pedal. So, a good rule about pedal is that you change it, meaning the pedal goes up and down, whenever the chord changes. So, basically whenever the left hand moves, we pedal. I'll show you. So, pedal down. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Pedal, change and change and change. Like this, so it'd be one, two, three, Whenever you see the little arrow, that's when you change your pedal. And you would basically continue that all the way through, whenever you see a change. Another way that you can figure out pedal, it's actually rather simple, is just to listen. If something sounds too muddy or if things are getting kind of confused in the sound, just clear the pedal and then all of that will come clean again, okay? So you can use your ears and you can use the left hand notes to, cho to show you when you're changing your pedal. Okay, then after that, you can see we have all of the dynamics here. We start mezzo piano. We pretty well stay in the mezzo, the medium area through the whole piece. So we got mezzo piano, mezzo fortes, 
some beautiful crescendo decrescendos that make this piece really polished if you do them. Those are called phrasings, so that would be really nice. Um, a tempo here just means back to original tempo, so that's what that means, and it's in response to this little writ here. So then we go back to tempo, and then right at the end they just tell us to fade away. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on this channel. Uh, good luck, have fun, and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Miriam's Online Academy. Check back here for more videos and don't forget to subscribe below.